What's up YouTube and welcome back to Homebrew Subaru. Today I'm going to plan on tearing down the Forester engine, at least getting it down to the block. So intake manifold and the accessories, eventually the timing and cylinder heads will all be coming off and just kind of checking out things as they come apart to see how bad they are. Looking a little dirty in there. This clutch was at the end of its days, I should say. I mean, it still worked pretty good. The hydraulics seemed a little bit weak or the pressure plate seemed a little bit weak. So that's uh, where I'm going to begin is just uh, get the clutch disc off and set the assembly onto the stand. Well, the clutch is in much better shape than I thought it was going to be. It is a replacement set, so this is another XZD clutch. And really the wear on it is not too bad. I mean, it's starting to get a little thin in some spots, especially up, up in there. But uh, overall, it really doesn't show extreme amounts of heat. There's no real cracks in the pressure plate or the flywheel. There's no real significant discoloration. Uh, the amount of material that's come off is obvious. I mean, it's, it's real thick. Ever since I bought the Forester, I was having like a shuddering clutch when really cold and then it would smoothen right out as soon as, you know, a couple steps on it. But I always kind of wondered because, uh, as hard as I've been on the clutch at some times, it's always grabbed hold and it's always held on really good. I guess that's why it has been actually replaced and you know a reasonable clutch went back into it but it's all being replaced and i just wanted to have a really good look at it to see what the actual condition of it was
moving right along nothing's given me any real problems except for that that EGR tube the top fitting was seized up and I did have to heat the uh, the intake a little bit but just that little bit of heat and it let go no problem uh, the, the knock sensors actually have been replaced as well when I when I first did that tune-up I had one of the knock sensors on hand because I maybe I saw a little crack in the one that was on there or something hopefully this crank pulley comes off and I really don't know the condition of the timing belt I kept on telling myself to take this cover off and inspect it at some point and I'm I just don't think I ever did uh, so we might be in for a surprise I don't know Now I've always kind of suspected that the time belt in the Forester has never been changed and that's for a few reasons. Uh, for one, I have no record of it being changed and for two, I bought it right at the mileage where a lot of maintenance would start needing to be done and I had a feeling that the lady I bought it from had that in mind. Obviously the belt has a ton of wear into the backside of it. The ribs are all starting to shine right through. It does say Subaru on the belt. The inside's in really good shape. I don't see any significant cracking and along the sides, but you can see even the sides have hardened up quite a bit, indicating it's it's likely an original belt. Pulley on the tensioner and the rest of the pulleys, they uh, definitely have never been changed. This guy's a little quieter, but the vibration I can feel in it, wow. So I've got the timing all apart. We can move right onto the cylinder heads.
And here we are with the cylinder heads removed. Nothing really gave me any issues and the pistons are rather clean for you know how long they've been in there and the way that it's been running. There is lots of cross hatching in the cylinder. Most Subarus I see good cross hatching throughout. And this thing did have considerable piston slap. I'm not gonna be doing anything with the pistons. I thought I might be, but I just figured no, this is a good assembled, good running assembled bottom end. I'm not gonna screw with it. And obviously the oil's been leaking for quite some time and saturated stuff. I'm pretty sure it's gone into this mount a little bit and that's one of the reasons I swiped the mounts off that newer engine I had. Now the head gasket's failing for an oil leak in these years on EJ engines as a normal Subaru thing. This is the oil return gallery and what happens is the bottom of it starts to deteriorate. You can see a lot of the material missing right here and if I work away at it I'll start getting off more. And uh, basically that just starts to uh, let go and the oil seeps right out. Uh, it doesn't take any real st any any amount of pressure or anything. It's just uh, Just any oil that's sitting there at the time of return. You can see how bad it is on this corner uh, just generally starts leaking out very very slowly and Just dresses the whole bottom of the engine with oil. The cylinder heads look very clean I don't see any issues with any of the rollers and I have a feeling there may have been a little bit more carbon buildup in these because there was a little bit on the center head bolts and just doing regular oil changes has actually flushed out a lot of the material and clean these right up pretty much. Even the valves and combustion chambers, everything looks really good. It's been burning really well, maybe a little bit too lean if anything, uh, but even the plugs have lasted really good. So my plan is to keep on pushing forward as fast as possible while I have the time to do so. Uh, well, maybe not fast as possible, but I'll be coming out regularly to get these done. Uh, I think I'm going to do a bunch of cleanup stuff off camera, and then I will be disassembling the heads to lap valves and get those back together. I think aside from the cleanup stuff, I'm going to be probably painting the intake manifold and the valve covers, so there's some other work I need to do. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, and if you're new here and you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button. They moved it over here. Leave your questions and comments further down below, and I'll see you in the next one.